Legion Tactical Cutlery. Hold the line! Hey everyone, hey guys, doing Grugs here at Legion Tactical Cutlery. Welcome back, Troops Legionnaires and any new recruits. And the time has come. We are going to test out the Extremaratio Tuscan in N690 steel from Bowler. I am excited. This is my grail knife, and I can't wait to put this to the test. To those operators out there in the Legion, what are you all carrying today? Well, the perfect combination, in my opinion, an Ernie Emerson CQC7 with this Tuscan. Awesome combo. Let me know what you guys are operating with. Veterans, active military, law enforcement, first responders. This is one badass blade. I just want to say thank you very much, all of you, for your service. Enjoy the video. Quick specs troops, let's go over this awesome combat blades dimensions. Once again, this is the Extrema Ratio Tuscan. Overall length, 12.04 inch. Blade length, 6.57 inch. Blade steel, Bowler N690. Blade design, Tonto. Blade grind, flat. Blade finish, satin. Blade hardness, 58 HRC. Blade thickness, 6 millimeters. Handle length is 5.47 inch. Handle material is a black G10 and it weighs 15.43 ounces and it features an ambidextrous Cordura sheath, Molly system, full tang, lanyard hole, and a paracord that is included, all wrapped up in a pretty nice box. Check that blade out, man. Let's do a close up, okay? Now, don't forget, there's a couple of places I want you to go check out. Go check out the Extrema Ratio USA website for more information on this knife. Also, there's another flavor to this knife with a great coated blade and a green handle. Man, oh man, is that beautiful. Also, I did a Legion premiere on this knife where we got up close and personal. Go check that out. But as of right now, look at this Tonto blade, man. Look at that high flat grind. Awesome swedges. Man, the Tonto is just crazy look at that edge how shiny that edge is man this thing is sharp okay there is a sharpening choil here a slight guard beautiful g10 scales there's a nice cutout in the g10 scale and in the steel so you can get a good purchase on the knife right here plenty of room for big hands and you know if you're a big operator out there in the field you've got plenty of room on this knife to do some work stainless steel hardware removable scales uh, there is a hole to make the knife a little bit lighter also you could wrap power cord around this knife so they thought about that a bit of a protruding tang right here as you can see lanyard hole full tang goodness at six millimeters man with the extremoraccio logo right there on the spine towards the rear of the handle okay nice clean blade i know some of you will like that let's check out the other side very nice clean blade just some small logos on the ricasso area as you can see beautifully done man i love these handles nicely contoured I think they did a fantastic job. I like this handle. I'm gonna try uh, batoning and chopping without a lanyard because it, it just does feel like it's it's got a really solid grip, all right? And no matter how I hold it, it feels really good in the hand. Boy, let me tell you, this is definitely something for special forces, man. Let me tell you. Instructor Zero would love this, guaranteed. All right, troops, let's take a look at the sheath. Let me make sure I put this so you see it in camera. Now, the sheath, I think, in my opinion, is well engineered. All right, it is a nylon Cordura sheath. Everything is ambidextrous here, removable. This has um, Velcro in the back if you need quiet carry without the, you know, without the snaps or the Velcro. Uh, it is capable and possible. This piece right here, the leg 
uh, dangler is removable, can be put to the other side. And with the Molly compatible slots over here, you can adjust the height for your hip, for your leg. It does come with a leg strap. I just have it wrapped around in these Velcro ties that are not included with this sheath. However, man, I think it's an excellent addition and only adds to the versatility of this sheath. Let's pop the knife in. Let me unsnap these. Now there is no plastic insert in here, so it's very, very quiet. Okay, again, you can take these off for quiet carry. You could opt for a different sheath. Let's snap this in. Sorry about that troops. Kind of bent over a little bit. I wanted to show this knife on the, uh, the background over here of this stump. So check that out, man. It is awesome. I, I like the sheath. I've taken it hiking. A very versatile sheath. Once again, go check out my Legion premiere of the Tuscan. All right, it's time to get this working. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to two channels that I really enjoy and that have tested out the Tuscan. The first one is an Italian content creator, Henry Garcia. He has an awesome video on the Tuscan. Go check him out. Also, my man at Bush Camping Tools. He also has an awesome video on the Tuscan. He has the other flavor. Go check him out. Let's get started, man. Okay, here we go. I, uh, I'm not going to use a lanyard. I got to tell you the truth. I kind of like the way this looks. I want to try and leave it alone. And I'm just going to use, you know, my hands and some gloves, you know, to test out uh, what gloves feels like on this handle. But I got to tell you, with this cutout, it feels pretty good. So I got a decent sized log over here from a tree that was chopped down in the woods. It's uh, been uh, down all summer long. So it's this has got some, uh, this uh, log has got some, some heft to it and should be pretty sturdy. There's a knot right there. Let's, let's start over here with the knot, okay? Let's not play around. Now troops, this is a combat knife, okay? I acknowledge that. However, you know, I can't go kill anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not an operator, I'm not a soldier. I can't go out and go test it on somebody. So the next best thing is, you know, use it for a type of survival situation outdoors. And uh, I am very familiar with N690 steel and the, you know, the Italians, when they heat treat N690, they do it, they do it right. I'm gonna let the blade do the work. I'm not gonna plow through this. All right, we got a good start going on. Okay, now usually I always use a lanyard. However, you know, with this awesome cutout right here and this texturing, I have a firm and decent grip on this knife. Troops, give me a minute. I have a guest here. Let me just say hello to him. Sorry about that. That is one of the campground's staff, and he's the guy who cuts all these trees down. So I had to talk to the man. He gave me an update of all the trees that he's going to be cutting, and there's going to be more uh, trees cut in the area where I'm, uh, uh, I'm usually doing my videos, which is going to be real good because it's going to be more wood. Let's continue, okay? Once again, I apologize, but uh, it was worth talking to the uh, to the gentleman let's get uh, let's get this going
Okay, now we're getting in. By this knot area, it's a little harder, but now we're getting some nice cuts over here. And once again, I'm gonna try and use every part of the blade, but if you see the discoloration in the steel, that's the sweet spot area. The handle feels good, man. Let me tell you, the, um, the texturing over here, you get a decent grip and the cutout, you know, you, you, you get your, your finger or maybe two fingers in here and you get a nice, you know, firm, decent grip while doing some chopping. Uh, there's just chunks flying all over the place quick look that edge looks good yeah man awesome just awesome once again i'm letting the blade do the work it's it's front heavy you know um so it's going to do a good job with the chopping So far, so good. Now, I'm just gonna pause for a second. Edge is looking good. I'm just gonna pause for a second. I wanna put on gloves to show the operators out there what this uh, knife feels like with gloves and show you also. Give me a second. Nothing tactical, however. Leather, pretty thick. And it feels good in the hand, as you could see. Still have room for, you know, bigger, you know, bigger hands. So another finger here with the gloves. If you're, you know, an operator and using tactical type gloves, this is how it may or may not look depending on the type of glove that you wear. So let's test it out with the gloves because I feel a really good grip now. Yeah, we're looking good, man. I mean, it is just, look at that. Look at that area right here. Nice and hard, man. Plus, once again, I went through that knot. All right, let's finish it up right here. Not the best uh, afternoon. There's some clouds, but the sun did pop out every once in a while. And the, you know, one of the reasons why I waited to test out for this knife is to get some good lighting for you. And it's perfect today and it's not raining. I don't have to worry about getting wet. Uh, pretty good deal. Got lucky today.
Uh, I mean, the glove is, is very, very positive. Edge is looking good, man. I'm sure most of you with a knife like this wouldn't do anything like this. However, you know, this is a channel that tests out knives and I've got my grail to, to test out and I'm just really excited to show everybody. I'm part of the, I'm part of the Extremoratio Tuscan Club. All right, check that out, man. Check that out. And we are looking good with that edge. Not a blemish. No scratches yet on the blade, it seems. So yeah, man, let's, uh, let's do something else. Uh, let's do some vertical. And I broke out the Centurion Club over here in honor of testing out the Tuscan. Okay. Let's give it a, a go. I don't think this knife should have any issues, especially with that six millimeter spine. Okay, look at that. That's a nice split, man. After I got past the top part, uh, it's gliding right through this piece of wood. So camp chores, man, I think we are not going to have any issues whatsoever. I'm just trying to find a thicker piece here. Let's continue. Let's make some quarters out of this. That uh, flat grind is making quick work. As you can see. Looking good. Let's process this even further. Just a little bit more. Nice. Okay, we almost went through that knot. It split it. That's fine by me. It works. Let's do it again. This is the one with the knot. Bark, kindling. All right, let's make a little bit more. Let's try the rear of the blade. That didn't do too good. Uh, you know what? Let's do this one. Right here, by the rear. Okay, just trying to prevent it from falling. Well, there you go. Murphy's Law. However, it did it. One more time. One more time. Just got rid of the bark over there. Perfect. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna find a, a whole fresh new log and do some uh, horizontal batoning, so be back. I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I wanna use this for feather sticks right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna V-notch or just cross baton this stick. I'm going to do it smart. Just aligning where the cuts are.
Good job. Let's take a look at that edge. Looking good, looking straight. Let's try a little different angle now. I am trying to use different parts of the blade. That looks good. Looks like the heat treat is coming through. I'm sure this is, an easy, is not an easy uh, test for stress on this blade. We're getting through it. We're getting through it. You could see all the way around. All right. And it might, you know, might not be going all the way through yet because it's so thick, the blade, you know, the tapering, you know, the V grind is thick, but that's a good thing. I might have to start doing some uh, some more V-notch type of tarning now. I was hoping to go through. Well, let's keep going anyway. So it might be a long video. The handles, they seem to be on there decent. No, nothing's getting loose. But, you know, they're screwdriver type uh, uh, hardware. So, no problem with that. You can always fix that up. All right. Cool. While on video. Okay, you see what that did? That edge. Right in front of the camera. I just want to show everybody. That edge is straight, okay? No bends, no chips. I did a cross baton through that. Excellent. Uh, let me just see what piece is good for feather sticks. We're gonna do some horizontal batoning. Be right back. All right, troops, I got a nice log here for feather sticks, but again, I wanna show that the edge is looking good on this knife. Okay, awesome. The sun is coming out, especially after 10 days. It's been rain for three days, the past three days, and then dark gray skies the past seven. It's just been a real tough week, let me tell you. Let's do some horizontal batoning so we can make some nice feather sticks, okay? Using the whole blade. Nice. You know, once you start that split, you don't need to pound on this, you know? Here we go, troops. Okay. Let's just cut the fibers here. And let me just put this down. We'll make, see if we can make thirds out of this. OK, 
okay that'll be perfect i will process this off camera get it a little bit thinner but now i want to test out okay sorry about that i'm going to test out the protruding tang i'm going to knock this into the wood and then for those who are anti-batoners we're going to try doing this a bit different one second okay pick this up That tip should be in there pretty sturdy. Easy, easy. So the sharp blade starts with a good uh, cut and then the flat grind does a nice job with splitting the wood. So for those who don't wanna use your knife to baton, here you go, okay? So I've got some real nice pieces for feather sticks. Let me just do one more. Now this tip is robust, man. This tip is so robust, nothing's gonna happen to this tip, guaranteed. Let's, let's just process this on camera for a little bit so I could show you what I do off camera. perfect feather sticks. Now I'm going to go off camera, process these a little more. I'll be back. These are just processed, okay, from that long uh, branch and just baton them straight, you know, flat like this. This piece is from the first log that I chopped. Let's just make some uh, individual curls here. I haven't done any kind of a sharpness test or edge retention test yet but we're doing that right now man look at that nice and thin okay so after all that beating batoning especially that one cross baton through that complete log we're looking good man just make a nice little pile as an example here I gotta tell you this sun feels good man it's been it's been a long gray 10 days finally getting a little sun this afternoon and it is feeling fantastic perfect for testing you get a good view of the blade just once again i'm just gliding on the very top I'm not even using an angle. It's it's nice and smooth now. It's nice and rounded off. So I'm not using an angle at all. And it, the blade, the secondary bevel is just biting in, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. A little paw right there now feather stick combat capable man combat capable It's, it's so sharp, it's just going right through the wood. All right, so I'll just put it in the individual pile. Whether it's a feather stick or this right here, you know, to me, it doesn't matter, man. You're getting the job done. You're making, you're making uh, you know, something nice and thin and flammable to start up that fire.
there you go all right that's cool now let's try let's try this stuff okay let me get rid of this bark which was easy Let's uh, let's do the curls. There's a little bit different species of wood here. Once again, capable, and it's doing it. Digging into the rounded off part of the wood. So just uh, an example of how, you know, the blade is biting in into the rounded off piece of the wood. Just a little bit different pile right over here. And uh, feather stick. I know some of you will like this blade because it has a very small sharpening choil, not a huge finger choil. Some of you may or may not like that, but uh, for this particular blade, it's doing a good job. You can put on the gloves and do a little bit of choking up where the guard is, right? But you gotta be careful you don't get cut and you can do a little bit more close-up work. But you could see that the knife, after that bit of abuse for a combat type blade, it can do the outdoors, man. It'll do the outdoors for sure. I'm so excited. I'm testing out this Tuscan, my grail. I own, this is my fourth Extremaratio Tonto. I think they make the best Tontos in the world, the best looking design Tontos in the world. That sun feels good, but it is getting hot now, man. Woo! No doubt about it, man. It's going to be able to make uh, feather sticks. Let's see what else we could do. All right, troops, it's time for a tip test, okay? I am going to try and go through this little log over here. I'm going to take my time. Just going to be very careful. Okay. I'll tell you that that cut out right here in the G10 and in the steel perfect and then you know with that little guard I uh, I'm pretty confident oh look at that it's split nice oh perfect ah, and I just used a knife to wedge it open tip looks good let's do it again that was easy Nice, nice. One more, one more. I got this uh, heavy duty knot over there. I'm kind of curious now. Uh, well, it did one side, which is good. It's a start, right? It did split almost all the way down. Now let's do it over here. did it <laughs> awesome awesome and that tip is fine man that's a penetrator right there all right just a quick down and dirty example you, you know you might be an operator jungle environment and uh, you need to make a you know booby trap maybe you're an expert you know at jungle warfare and uh, was very effective during vietnam right so
There you go. You make a ton of these, you know? You stick it into the ground. You make uh, some kind of a pit. Put poison on here. Or if you're if you're hunting, you know, and you're making a trap uh, for, I don't know, boar, for example. You know? Obviously, you wouldn't poison the tip. But you don't need to make anything too elaborate. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty effective. You know, you got a 100 pound animal that you're trying to trap falls into the pit. The weight alone will go right, you know, go right through these these sticks here. But uh, quick, easy, down and dirty. You know, and uh, as you can see that it's taken off this bark without a problem. Okay. So for whatever reason, you know, you can make a make a bunch of these. Me personally, I wouldn't use my knife as a spear. You can. I don't want to use my knife as a spear. This is a valuable tool, especially if this is all you've got. So you can make a spear out of a nice hard piece of wood. You know, harden it up in the fire a little bit. Make that tip nice and robust. And you have a primary weapon. And this will stay safe on your side. You know what I mean? So I think very effective. Um, all right, not, you know, not a bushcraft knife, but again, if you needed to do some carving, you can do it. It's sharp enough, you know, if you needed to make a dowel, again, if you're in the jungle or if you're in some kind of heavy duty forest and you are skilled in the art of warfare and part of your skills is to make primitive type traps for the enemy. I wish I had some bamboo. I would do, you know, show you with the bamboo. But just an example of doing a little bit of carving. You know, maybe that's a dowel. Maybe that is part of your contraption um, for your your trap. You know, I've seen content creators make these really nice primitive traps with their knives. Simple yet effective in design right so and uh i don't know let's just let's just make a notch just to show you and i'm getting i'm let me see no matter where i am I, I i can't seem to block the sun but let me make the notch in fact what i can do right is tap it in the start of the notch and then use the blade to make the rest of the notch. And I gotta tell you, the handle is very comfortable making the notch sharp enough to just press down and cut the excess off. Again, you're a primitive hunter. Oh, this piece broke, but anyway, you get the idea. If you're a primitive hunter, you know, you could still use this knife to accomplish your, 
your, your task to make a trap, okay? Add another piece of wood here, bring it down. You know, I, I don't know, I, I'm not an expert in, in warfare with booby traps, but you get the idea here. And push comes to shove. You know, it's a, it's a big bushcraft knife, but it's a bushcraft knife nonetheless. You know, it'll act as a bushcraft knife. Not one of my best notches, but here, I'll do it on this side. Still capable, as you could see. So, you got punji stick or spear, primitive traps or, you know, art of warfare type uh, contraptions. A little bit of carving here for a dowel, a notch, chair, outdoor chair, table, etc. All right, we're looking good. All right, troops, just to show you, I did fix it, okay, with this knife. I did use the baton to angle notch it a little bit more so you can see a better angle. I just uh, wanted to make sure that I showed you a decent carved uh, implement here, okay? So uh, let's test out some food. What do you say? Got a little snack. They got some hard uh, salami. I got some cheese and I got a tomato. I want to show you how sharp this blade is. I did sanitize the blade and uh, let's test it out. Let's see how it works out with, uh, with these three food type mediums. Okay, we got the hard, hard sausage first. And I'm cutting it nice and thin on an angle. You know, even though the blade is six millimeters, you know, if you need to do something delicate and thin, maybe you got a whole bunch of people you have to entertain at the campsite or your troops. You know, you just using the sharpness of the blade to cut. And it's working just fine, man, you can see. Now I'm just showing you an example of how thin this can go, all right? So here, that's, that's pretty thin for something that's six millimeters. This is good to go. Okay, I have some hard cheese next. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just cube it. Perfect. Okay. We have some meat, some cheese. Now I want to test out a tomato. Let me just clean this and we'll test out how thin I can slice a tomato with this knife. Big brutal battle blade. Let's see what it can do. Okay. Now again, you know, when you're out in the field, who cares how thin you're slicing it? Just an example for everybody. And it'll cut it nice and thin, especially after that beating that we gave this knife. It's doing great. And it's kind of nice that the blade is, is flat because I'm getting these awesome cuts over here so you got a little you got a little lunch charcuterie board out out in the field okay good to go troops knife did real well with food now i've got some other camp tasks over here some rope um now if you want to chop it okay do some push cuts okay works great uh nice thick rope if you're using it around the camp or in the you know on base or out in the field cuts easy and then a little bit thinner rope i don't want to waste it all so what i'll do is just cut a small piece here all right i mean looks good you know you want to chop it awesome works good 
you have some plastic ties. You know, maybe you're an operator and you have to tie a bad guy down. All right, I got a few different kinds here. I got a couple small ones. These are a little bit better than these. Let me just tie it up. But just, you know, again, an example. And you need to cut. There we go. And... Here's another one. Let's get in here. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's tie up these three. These are, you know, um, this would be great for camping. Hiking, you take a few of these with you, you know. Uh, I think they're kind of lighter than paracord, although obviously paracord is very useful to many. But uh, this is not bad to, to take with you. They're kind of lightweight and they're pretty strong. And they'll do the job. I got three of them here. All right, good. So now, um, one thing about this knife I noticed is that the spine isn't as sharp as I, I, I thought it was going to be. And I'm checking out a little bit different areas like the Ricasso area or this little slight guard. And even towards the end over here, it's all rounded off. But uh, I have some fat wood, you know, and we need to scrape some fat wood. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's, that's good. That's, that's really good. I, uh, I didn't expect that at all. That is a pleasant surprise. And I'm doing the flat part of the, flat, the fat wood. Angle where the where the 90 degree is, but the flat part here, it's doing real good. Nice. Let me get you know what? Let me get a piece of wood, man. Let me get a piece of wood and let me see if I could scrape some wood. One second, troops. I'll be back. Okay, just grabbed a few feather sticks that I used the knife to make, just to show you. And, uh, oh yeah, wow, that's good, man. This is good news. This is that wood that I uh, chopped, batoned, and processed, so very good, man. Nice, nice little pile. Let me just put that together here. Um, let me see if I can find something a little bit harder. Not that this is, is not hard, it's, it's hard and it's doing it. I just wanna, I just wanna make sure. But look at that, I mean, that is, that is working great. You know, you got a nice seat, I'm doing the, opposite side holding it where this cutout is it feels great no hot spots and I mean really I'm really digging in there man so that's cool you can see some of the shavings over here all right um I'm gonna see if I can find something a little bit harder one second okay something a little bit harder Let's see. Now I guess it does depend on the type of wood, but this is definitely a little bit harder wood. I'm just kind of curious by the jimping area. Well, this particular piece, it seems to be needing more effort. Let me try, I'm gonna try that little sh sharpening choil. Right? It's a tool, so I always wanna test. 
not as efficient. And well, I don't wanna, I'm just, I'm just curious. Give me a second here, troops. Make sure I don't cut myself while I'm doing this. Just so you see. So this particular piece of wood, I mean the protruding tang, it's okay. This little, this piece of wood, it is a little bit harder, I guess, than the other two that I, I just tested out. It's still doing it. But as always, you know, you could always use the blade to do the scraping. Worst, you know, worst comes to worst, push comes to shove. So, but I guess the important thing here for me is that it did, you know, did what I needed to do on the fat wood. Okay. And, you know, for this other wood, let's face it, all we really need is some nice thin curls. We could add it to the pile. Okay, you see that nice and thin. All right, man, look, check it out. Okay, so spine work great for the fat wood. This harder piece, we made some individual curls. And now, I am not sure, you know, how the spine is gonna work on this ferro rod. So, let's test it. Yeah, not too good. By the Ricasso area. Nope. Oh, by the Jimpin area. All right, good. Okay, so definitely by the Jimpin area. You know, we're looking good. Let me try a few more strikes to see if I could just light up this little pile. For everybody, if not, at least we know. Oh yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. With some effort, you're going to be able to, you know, spark it up, it seems. So that's that's what's important. You know what I mean? There we go. All right, all right. That's for uh, Bush Camping Tools and for uh, Henry Garcia, okay? That's for you guys. I don't know if you watch my channel. I think one of you do. But one for Henry. One for Bush Camping Tools. One for the Legion. So, she worked, man. Awesome. This being my grill knife, man, all I can say is that was, that was awesome. Just awesome. So, you know, whether you're a military, first responder, law enforcement, avid outdoorsman, hiker, hunter, fisherman. You know what, man? I think this knife can fill those roles very well. I loved it. This knife kicks some serious ass. That edge is sharp. The handles are still on. There was no no play. I mean, Extrema Ratio did it right. They did it right. Troops, Legionnaires, New Recruits, thank you very much. As always, appreciate you all taking the time to check out my channel and my videos. 
And I just want to thank Extrema Ratio for the great opportunity of testing out this knife. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me bring awareness to everybody. Hashtag 22 a day. Hashtag 22 a day no more. There are veterans in active military. Once they get out of the service, they do face a lot of challenges. Unfortunately, one of these challenges is suicide. So at the end of this video, pause on the slides. Call those phone numbers. Surf those websites. There's also a message from one of your own, Martin Miller, Vietnam veteran, 66 to 69, U.S. Army. He has a heartfelt message. Please seek the help you all have earned and deserve. Troops, legionnaires, new recruits, extrema ratio. Thank you again. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to go check out Bush Camping Tools and Henry Garcia. They have videos on the uh, Tuscan. Get a different perspective from other content creators and enjoy. At the ready, troops. Hold the line. Take care. Legionnaires! Thank <laughs> you.